going to do this one more time. So today on our campground crafting episode, we are doing an automatic transfer switch, a series one. This is the second one. The coach already has one. Let me show you. Okay. So the coach already has a transfer switch, right? So you have the shore power that comes up into the switch, and then you have generator power that comes into the switch, and then it goes out to the coach, all right? And it goes the, the power system inside the coach. So we, I need to get the power from that inverter into the coach but I don't want to disconnect this. So the solution was to add a second transfer switch right here. It's gonna live right over there. And I'm gonna show you how I'm wiring that in. So this is the important thing. This out leg, that's where all the tie-in's gonna happen. This is all gonna stay like it is. I'm going to use this line here to connect the other two together and then that will be wired into the new transfer switch and then all the power from that transfer switch will go out into the coach. So hang tight and I'll kind of explain it a little better. All right, back at the new one. So basically what needs to happen is the power that was coming in from the shore and the generator, instead of going out into the coach, I'm gonna bring it over into here so that this switch will always be powered on on the what this is calling the generator side or the preferred side when there's power coming from either a shore plug-in or from the generator on the coach. I only want it to switch to here if there's nothing coming into here and I've got my my uh, inverter running. So say that we're boondocking somewhere and I don't want to run the generator, I just switch on the inverter, it'll flip to this leg, all right? If it's on this leg and then everything's gonna come out here and this is the same as that output that you saw on the other one. So this will come around. It's gonna be installed like this in the coach. So here's the other, uh, that's, we'll pretend that's the other automatic transfer switch. It has the, I'll flip it over. It's got the inputs coming into here, right? The one that's in the coach. So this, the output side, will come here and go to there and the wire that was coming out of here and going up through the floor of the coach, which goes to the distribution panel, that is going to be tied into this line here. So here, I'm gonna cut that end off. I'm gonna put a junction box here. I will put this in and then that in, and then that's where that connection will happen at that junction box so that this will be the power feed now into the junction box. And all of the power will start out through this transfer switch, which will either decide if it's shore power or generator power, regardless of whatever's coming through, will go through this. It will energize this side of this transfer switch, which is the generator or the preferred side of this transfer switch, which will then output to the coach. If there's nothing coming in on this transfer switch, we're not got the Jenny running, we do not have the shore power going, then this side has nothing. Now, if I don't have the inverter on, then there is no AC power to the coach. If I want AC power and I don't have it hooked up and I don't have the Jenny running, then I will turn on my inverter, which will be coming in through here. That will energize this side the switch will say, okie dokie, the generator's not running, so it thinks this is shore power, it thinks it's plugged into something, so it's going to energize this side, and then it will power the AC system of the coach. So, I hope that made sense, and uh, I'll give you a little update once we get this. I've already wired this, obviously, and um, we'll get it once it's in the coach. Now. Let me tell you what wire I used. So my inverter is a 2200 watt inverter. So that's 20 amps. So this is 12-2 wire, 12-2 NB. Uh, so it's just household wiring and it only has, it's 110, right? So it's got the hot leg, neutral leg, and then the ground, well, the ground is coming over to here, but the ground leg. 
you notice, this is a 50 amp box because I have a 50 amp coach, which means I have two hot legs, the black and the red, because it's essentially, it's a 220 volt coach. So you have 110 volt, 110 volt, it's a 220 volt. Well, if I just left this here, then only one half of my coach's power distribution panel would be powered up. If you get into a 50 amp coach's power distribution panel, you're gonna see that there are two breakers, two 50 amp breakers, and that's because one leg goes to one side and powers half of the coach, and then the other leg goes to the other side and powers half of the coach. So the way that you get power to both sides is jumper from the power side of the 110, which is the black, and jumper it over to where the red leg would be if we were using uh, a, a 220 cord which there's no reason to have that extra expense so this is just a piece of scrap that I ran over and I opted to use my six gauge just because I had it and now this will power this and all of this is six gate well that's six that's six that's eight that's eight I'll explain why that's like that in a second um, it's because of the device I chose to use so once this is energized, it will energize because of the jumper. My 110 will be split and I'll have 110, 110, but then we've only, our amperage is a little lower, but it's, it'll work. It means that I'll have power wherever I need power. And we're not running anything big on this coach anyway. Um, and so I'll just have to, I'll fit to figure out, I'll look at my, circuit breakers and find out what's on each side so that I have an idea. Um, I really only need to run a TV, maybe maybe a power outlet to charge up some stuff, and then, I don't know, the Instant Pot and the air fryer. That's about it. Oh, well, I'll talk about the refrigerator. All of this, all of this is basically because I have a refrigerator that runs on AC, but I'll that's a little bit more complex. We're just gonna deal with this right now. So anyway, so we have 6688, and that is because you can't buy that at the store. You can't buy a four six cord or a 220 amp six gauge cord, but you can buy a range cord. And a range cord is 220, so it's got the four circuits. It's got two hots, neutral, and a ground. What they did to kind of cheap out a little bit, this is 28 bucks from Lowe's, by the way, and it was six feet long. What they did to make it a little bit more flexible, a little bit less expensive, is they used six gauge for the power legs and they used eight gauge for the two, for the neutral and the ground leg. So that's fine, um, it'll, it'll be okay because the system is gonna take, well anyway, it, that's fine. So that's the reason I used that um, because it was 28 bucks. It was already UL listed. It's already got this nice insulation. It's designed to be sitting behind the range and people run it. Yeah. So it's fine. It's, it's perfect. It's great actually. Then trying to mock something together and put it in Romex and all that good crap. So, all right, well, I'm going to, uh, make my little base here that I'm going to sit this on and then I'll get it bolted into the motorhome, and I will show you how everything's wired up and how it all works um, in a bit.